Okay, um, we're here again at the Slavington Public Library to do our monthly diabetes talk, The Sweet Spot. I'm Ed Bechtel from Bechtel's Pharmacy, and today we're going to talk about uh, diabetes in your teeth. There are numerous, numerous complications associated with diabetes, but many problems can be minimized or even eliminated with proper planning and care. Unfortunately, the importance of oral health care is often overlooked. Today we'll take a look at the relationship between diabetes and gum disease. Did you know that oral problems can begin with very few symptoms? How can you prevent dental issues from occurring? We'll discuss how, discuss how often you should visit the dentist and what you should do to prepare for your visits. So we'll review some of our uh, sweet spot truths. Um, most of us know there are two main types of diabetes. Uh, with some exceptions, most diabetics fall into the categories of either type 1 or type 2. Type 2, type 1 diabetes, your body doesn't make insulin. Type 2 diabetes, your body can make insulin, um, but it you, doesn't use it properly. If you're not sure which category you fall into, ask your doctor. Many times we can also tell based on the medications that you take. Remember, neither type of diabetes is worse than the other. You may get diabetes in different ways, but both types of diabetes can cause complications in the same way. So what should, should your blood sugar be? Um, in the morning, the fasting blood sugar should be between 80 and 130, um, or 80 and 125, depending on whose guidelines you're following. Um, and after you eat, an hour or two after you eat, your postprandial blood sugar should be under 180. That magic number of 180 is the point at which um, the excess blood sugar can cause damage to the blood vessels and the nerves. We control our blood sugar using a three-pronged attack, um, diet, exercise, and medications. Now you'll notice that two of those three are totally under your control. What you, what you eat and what you do um, are under your control. Your medications, um, that you have help from your doctor, but even that, whether you take the medications regularly, um, the way they're prescribed or not, is still under your control. So I'm willing to bet that when you think about the complications associated with diabetes, your teeth and gums are not the first areas that come to mind. Most of us know about the increased risk of developing heart disease, kidney disease, neuropathy, and other issues that are widely studied and published. But patients living with diabetes are also at an increased risk of developing gum disease. According to the CDC, over 30 million people in the United States have diabetes. That's just over 9.4% of the population. I don't know about you, but that number is staggering every time I hear it. Of course, it's important for everyone to take care of their teeth. After all, we only get one set. But patients living with diabetes need to be especially diligent. Did you realize that only one in 10 people brush their teeth properly? 90% of the population is doing it wrong? That doesn't mean we're not brushing, it means that we're not brushing correctly. Imagine if 90% of the population took a shower every day, but only stayed in the water for 15 minutes and didn't use soap. Woo! Before we dig deeper, let's define what we mean by gum disease. As we just mentioned, people living with diabetes are at an increased risk for developing oral health problems, including gum disease, such as gingivitis and periodontitis. Gingivitis is an early stage of gum disease that causes inflammation. It's very common. Estimates suggest that over 3 million Americans have some form of gingivitis. Periodontitis is the next step in gum disease. It's a serious gum infection that damages the soft tissue in your mouth and destroys the actual bone structure that supports your teeth. You may ask why patients living with diabetes are at an increased risk of developing gum, gum disease. Among other factors, these patients are generally more susceptible to bacterial infections. 
when your blood sugar is elevated, the white blood cells don't work properly, and it's harder for your body to fight off infection of any kind. And you know, gum disease, infections in your gum are no different than any other infection. They also have a decreased ability to fight bacteria once it invades their teeth and gums. That's why proper continual care of your mouth is vital. Like most complications associated with diabetes, gum disease is linked to your blood sugar control. Patients who are not controlling their blood glucose levels are more likely to develop gum disease and have been shown to experiencing, experience more severe gum infections. They also lose more teeth than well-controlled patients. Remember that serious gum disease is an infection. Like most infections, once it begins, it can cause your blood sugar to rise making diabetes even harder to control. Patients living with diabetes that is poorly controlled also tend to heal more slowly, which increases their chance of infection after dental surgeries and procedures. There are also other oral conditions that have been associated with diabetes, such as thrush and dry mouth. These can lead to soreness, ulcers, infections, and cavities. Gum disease may be painless, especially in the early stages. You may not even know you have it until serious damage has been done. What's your very best weapon? Be sure to see your dentist regularly. Your dentist can diagnose gum disease in the early stages and start you on the road to improvement. Many patients living with diabetes complain of dry mouth. This can be caused by the medications you take or by high blood sugar levels. A dry mouth can increase your risk of cavities. When your mouth is dry, there's less saliva to wash away germs and the acids they create. In some cases, dry mouth can lead to more serious problems such as salivary gland infections. If you have dry mouth, try drinking more fluids or chewing sugar-free gum to help keep your mouth moist or your saliva flowing. There are also saliva substitutes available. We carry a couple different ones at the pharmacy. Here are some of the common warning signs of gum disease and what to watch out for. Um, bleeding gums when you brush your teeth or floss. Contrary to popular belief, bleeding gums are not normal. <laughs> some people think you have to brush until you gums bleed, that's not, that's going a little too far. Uh, swollen red or tender gums, gums that are pulling away from your teeth, pay special attention to teeth that may look longer. Plus, pus between your teeth and gums, bad breath, loose permanent teeth, changes in your bite, changes in the fit of partial dentures or bridges. If you have any of the above, but the above, it's definitely time to see your doctor or your dentist. <laughs> the majority of gum disease begins with one culprit, plaque. Germs work to destroy your teeth and gums, and those germs are carried in the sticky combination of food, saliva, and bacteria known as plaque. Plaque likes to sit and collect on your gum line, which allows the germs to get to work. Eventually, the germs will make your gums tender and red, maybe even causing them to bleed. The goal of your daily mouth cleaning routine should be to get rid of plaque. When plaque stays put, it can harden into tartar. Tartar builds up under the gum line, and that can happen very quickly, often in little over a day. More plaque will then form over the tartar, and at that point, only your dentist or a dental hygienist can get the gunk off of your teeth. If you ignore plaque and tartar, which ultimately will lead to gingivitis, your gum disease will only get worse. Once you reach severe periodontitis, the infection will destroy the bone around your teeth, and those teeth will either fall out or need to be pulled. So let's quit talking about what can happen and move on that what you can 
do today to prevent it. Yeah. And that affects your teeth. Yeah. I mean, no matter how many times a day I eat, I mean, I always feel that my teeth are goofy. They're always full of stuff. Yeah, right? so, so you, your mouth is dry all the time. Yes, that's why I chew gum yeah. all the time. Yeah. But I mean, does that mean I have to brush three, four times a day or whatever to get that off? Or Prob Probably three times a day would be good. Um, you know, the I mean, I have no trouble so far, but... Yeah. Yeah, three times a day would probably be, probably be good. Maybe you know, after each meal and at bedtime, mm -hmm. four times, four times mm -hmm. a day, mm -hmm. you know, and then sugar-free gum or sugar-free hard candy to, mm -hmm. to, you know, keep some moisture there, mm -hmm. would be good. <coughs> it probably doesn't come as a surprise that most people don't brush their teeth for an adequate amount of time. You should allow three minutes of brushing to clean all your teeth. Well, I can tell you, three minutes seems like an awful long time it's to be brushing your. <laughs> well, I think my electric toothbrush it's automatic and it goes for two minutes. Okay. And then it shuts off. So you you're new? getting at least mm -hmm. two minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. That's probably. What did they, they used to tell us to sing a song? What was the song you were supposed to sing? Sing your ABCs or sing. Mary had a little lamb or something like that for, for the kids to make sure the kids brush long enough. Mm -hmm. One potato, two potato for washing your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you have <never> our teeth. <laughs> so. I know I don't. So you should choose a toothbrush that has soft bristles and rounded ends. Soft or medium bristles are less likely to hurt your gums. When I was a kid, I always had hard bristles, and uh, Dr. Gower used to tell me that I brushed too hard. I was putting, uh, <laughs> I, w I was, yeah, I was, I was wearing them out. And you're going this way. Yeah. <laughs> um, hold your brush at an angle against the gum line where your teeth and gums meet. Move your brush back and forth using short, gentle scrubbing motions. Brush the front and back surfaces of your teeth, including all the chewing surfaces. Brush your tongue to remove germs and freshen your breath. Don't forget to gently brush your gums. Purchase a new toothbrush every three to four months when the bristles are worn or bent. Um, I never heard of that, brush your gums. Yeah, brush your gums. Yep. Yep. Um, and they, they say no matter what kind of toothbrush you have, sometimes it doesn't, doesn't get everything. And, you know, using the water pick or something like that, actually you can clean your teeth more thoroughly um, using that than you, you know, can heard, with a toothbrush. I it's true that flossing is as important as brushing. Yeah, flossing is important too. That's uh, probably the next <laughs> slide. <laughs> The butler. Yeah. Yeah. I can't find them no more though, so the dentist gave me a couple. <laughs> not many people enjoy flossing their teeth, but if you're not flossing, you're only doing half the job of cleaning your teeth and gums. Flossing helps get into all the nooks and crannies that your toothbrush can't reach, cleaning away plaque and stubborn bits of food from between your teeth, as well as below the gum line. You should floss at least once every single day. Break off a long strand of floss and wind it around your favored fingers. Hold the floss tightly. Leave about an inch of floss between your thumbs. Use a gentle sawing motion to get the floss between your teeth. Be careful not to slap, snap the floss into your gums. Once the floss reaches your gum line, curve it and scrape it up and down on the sides of each tooth to remove plaque. As your floss gets dirty, move to a clean section and continue. Remember, get every tooth. And when you're done, rinse your mouth. There are many new flossers and floss holders on the market. You may wish to look into these items if you have arthritis in your hands or if you have existing dental work in your mouth. Ask your dentist about these tools that can make flossing easier. easier. 
In addition to gingivitis and peri periodontitis, diabetes can also make a patient more susceptible to other oral inf infections. These infections are caused by a cluster of germs that can create problems in one area of the mouth. Here are some of the oral infection warning signs. Uh, swelling or pus around any area in your mouth. Swelling could be large or small. Pain in your mouth that doesn't go away. White or red patches on your gums, tongue, or on the roof of your mouth. Pain when chewing. Painful teeth that hurt when you eat something cold, hot, or sweet, or when you chew. Dark spots or holes in your teeth. As we've discussed, oral infections can make your blood sugar even harder to control. Um, anytime you have an infection, your body releases, you know, adrenaline and cortisone, you know, to, the, your body interprets the infection as stress and it's trying to get rid of it. So, unfortunately, those things raise your blood sugar. So, um, when you have an infection, it makes it harder to control your blood sugar. Oral infection. Make oral infections a part of your diabetes toolkit. Plan ahead and discuss options with your dentist and your doctor so that you're prepared to ha handle any needed adjustments. So if you're on insulin and you have an oral infection, it may require um, you to adjust your insulin dose. Having diabetes puts you at greater risk of developing fungal infections such as thrush. <laughs> if you have higher blood sugar levels or take antibiotics often, you're even more likely to experience fungal infections. Thrush makes white or sometimes red patches in areas of your mouth. These patches can become sore or turn into ulcers. Thrush tends to grow in moist areas that may be chafed or sore, like under poorly fitting dentures. Wearing dentures around the clock and smoking can increase your risk of thrush. Quitting smoking and limiting the time dentures are worn can reduce your risk of getting thrush. If you think that you have a fungal infection, it's important to talk to your dentist or your doctor right away. So before you go to the dentist, eat something. Try to have dental work done when your blood sugar level is within a normal range and your diabetes medication action is low. If you're using insulin, a morning visit after a normal breakfast is the best time. Take your usual medications before your dental visit. Remember to check and see if your dentist or your doctor would like you to change your dose before dental surgery. If your, den your dentist may consult with your doctor to decide about adjustments in your medications or to determine if an antibiotic is needed before surgery. Antibiotics may be necessary because of your increased risk of infection. If your blood glucose level is not well controlled, it's best to wait to have dental surgery. If your dental needs are immediate, you should speak with your dentist and your doctor about having dental procedures done in a hospital setting where you can be monitored more frequently and thoroughly. It may seem like a no-brainer, but be sure to tell your dentist that you have diabetes. Also, share any issues that you've been having with keeping your blood sugar levels under control. Tell them about any possible infections or tooth pain. Stick to your normal meal plan after dental work. If you can't chew normally, work out a plan to get the calories you need. Here, at, we, we've discussed sick day meal plans and that call for soft food or liquid foods. You may need to follow that plan until your dental work is healed. Unfortunately, diabetes can increase your risk of developing gum disease, but you can help prevent it by following a few simple steps. Brush regularly three times a day, floss correctly once a day, and visiting your dentist twice a year. Your teeth are important. Your dentist will be able to meet your special needs, but only if they know about your condition. Be honest about your management and your medications. Help them help you. And that's our recipe for this month.
when I saw it with about teeth today, I really went online. I've had two hip replacements last year, one, and I'm just I'm still having therapy on the other. And I know when I went to see my dentist, and other people told me too, your teeth are very important to your health. I think people aren't realizing that because before I had to have surgery, I had to have clearance from the dentist mm -hmm. and cleaning of my teeth. And now that I have uh, an implant, I also had a knee replacement. They said, I think that if you don't floss and clean your teeth, the bacteria there during surgery can go right, you know, to your joint replacement and to your heart. If so if you have, yeah, if you have, the, the prosthetic knee yeah. becomes a place where bacteria, you know, if they get into the bloodstream, if bacteria gets in the bloodstream, that infection, the bacteria can f settle in that prosthetic oh. knee and cause infection. If you have heart valve problems, either a heart murmur or an artificial heart valve, th that can become a place where a bacteria, if it gets in your bloodstream, Anytime you're having dental work and the mm -hmm. dentist is, you know, poking around your gums, that becomes an opportunity for bacteria from your mouth to get into the bloodstream through, you know, from your mouth. So, you know, after the knee replacement, oftentimes they'll have you take an antibiotic yes, an hour before you go for your, your, right. your, uh, and I guess with my hip replacement, it's the same thing. Right. That's what yeah. Knee replacement, hip replacement, artificial yeah. valves. Yeah. Now, my, uh, my sister-in-law's father had very, very bad teeth. He didn't go to the dentist for years and years. Mm -hmm. uh, he died of cancer. And uh, it was mentioned he should have done something and taken care of his teeth. Now, a week ago, a friend of mine from church, her father passed away. He was 88. And I, I had seen him. And his... His teeth in the front were broken, and you know he he didn't go to a dentist either. I think years ago, people like ninety years old, they just didn't do that as much as we do today. And uh, I think his teeth, you know, you, you really have a lot of bacteria, like you're saying, in yeah. between your teeth, not just brushing. You need to floss and get it out between right. your teeth. That that could cause serious health issues. Yeah, they, they, there you there know. is a link between. Poor dental hygiene and heart disease. You know, so. Both of them had congestive heart failure. I mean, that's. Um, you, you don't. A lot of people don't realize how important yes. their, their teeth are to their overall health. Yeah.